Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a midday update for Friday, November 1st, 2019. We'll start out here, just a few, you know, I have an ever-growing list of uh, watch lists of trade ideas, but I want to share a few that uh, stand out that may become official trades soon. This is EZA. I was combing through my uh, watch list of all the uh, global or international indexes, or index tracking ETFs, I should say. And a couple stood out. Um, this is not an all-inclusive list, but some of the ones that I like. Uh, EZA, that's South Africa. And you have a, uh, well, let's go back to this weekly chart. This is a 10-year weekly chart. You can see here South Africa traded in a, you know, a big multi-year sideways trading range. Uh, and finally broke down below that range, got back above it, and it's been, you know, starting to trend. Well, since then, you can see an uptrend with the break of the downtrend line there, and it's been in a downtrend since. And that downtrend forms a nice, uh, big, uh, bullish falling wedge pattern here on the uh, weekly chart. So there's your divergence line. There's your downtrend line. A pop above the downtrend line would trigger a buy signal, and that could come any time, or uh, this may want to work its way down within the wedge. Uh, minimum target, I'd see, would be that 5483-ish uh, level here, at least viewing on the weekly chart. Again, that was the bottom of that range back then. Uh, although I think that we quite likely carry higher. The wedge itself, you take the widest part of the wedge, you add that to where the wedge breaks out, gives you a measured target. So uh, again, potential there, and I like the fact that it has bullish divergence forming. Uh, so a little bit of work to be done, and you can replicate it here on a daily chart, use log scaling, and just uh, add a downtrend line right here off the uh, highs back in early 2018. And so that would trigger a buy signal. I'll have to mock, mock this chart up add some uh, price targets. I can. I haven't done that yet. Again, I was just combing through this today, so these are on my watch list. But I can tell you right now, uh, minimum target here, if you get a breakout, it's 55.75 uh, right there, and uh, quite likely carry up higher than that. So again, uh, potential setup right now. Uh, another one that I liked that stood out was uh, EWM, and that was uh, Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia has broken out. We had a little whipsaw here. So you can see I have alternative trend lines. Let me just start with a weekly chart. It looks a little more clear. Uh, this is what I see on the weekly chart. A big old, uh, uh, very well-defined, very extended downtrend, very oversold here. And I haven't added it there, but there it is now. The big divergence is forming. You know, we had a divergent low back here, and that did lead to a nice rally too. That was uh, measured out for you. That was about a 32% rally off this smaller divergent low back here that was marked, and I believe I highlighted that at the time. And this time around, we have a even longer, more powerful downtrend line and, and bigger divergences. So one of the better looking overseas markets, uh, you know, U.S. is we're trading at you know all-time highs, and they're trading at multi-year, if not all-time lows, so, uh, on EWM. And so again, I, I look at everything as far as risk reward potential. If I had to put all my money into either the U.S. stock market or uh, these, you know, some of these international markets, well, you got to be these beat down markets. Doesn't mean they have to go up. But again, keep in mind you haven't triggered a buy signal yet. You need to break over here. Ideally, you want to see a, a big solid weekly candlestick close above the downtrend line there. And uh, these are potential targets here on the weekly chart. So. To simplify it here. Uh, from where we're at now, I'd say this one comes up to at least 36, and that'd be about a 28% gain there on EWM. Uh, we look at the daily chart, you can see I have a downtrend line here. It was broken above once from back below it, and we did break out recently, and this 28, 30-ish level seems to be a uh, pretty significant resistance that we're tr it's trying to punch through right now. You have a reaction low there, couple there went a little below, gap, reaction highs, reaction highs, and now there's. So if this one can break out and really build on today's gains, uh, it should open the door for move up here to any or all of these targets. Again, I'd say at least uh, this probably 31-ish area here, if not more, in the coming week. You know, it's more of a trend trade, longer-term swing trade idea. Another one that, uh, that caught my eye today, I might have covered this one recently. I know I did a video a couple months back on the chemical stocks. Let me get rid of that trend line there. It is SQM. This is a Chilean uh, chemical company here. And you can see nice uh, downtrend line right here. Breakout back test. And we've been consolidating, boxed in this uh, sideways trading range right here. Uh, bounded uh, by about 2880 or so on the upside. And uh, that looks like to me like a coiled spring, spring building energy. We had RSI divergence at the low right here. 
not on the PPO, but we did have divergence on the RSI. So a pop uh, above that level, you know, 28.78, you want to call it, be safe, say 28.30, uh, should bring us up here. Uh, possibly we have a reaction here, 31.47, but I'm favoring more of a, you know, whether we, you know, minor zigs and zags along the way, I think we'll work our way up here at about that 32.51. Uh, resistance level. There's a gap there, a couple reactions, plus a, a more significant trend line that comes into play around that level, depending if and when it gets there. So uh, to try to quantify it for you, that would be a lift of about yeah, 17, 18 uh, percent if we get that. And, you know, should it you know, consolidate then and break out through the above the downtrend line, there's potential for even more upside there. I think I mentioned this one the other day, if I didn't, in a video, RO, OROCF, uh, you have a nice divergent low, very clean downtrend line, uh, and that 185-ish, uh, 186 level, and so you have intersecting resistance levels. So pretty much, to keep it simple, pop over 186 should do the trick, and I'd say this one, you know, stop there, a little hiccup around 205 or so, and then a move up here to about 227, and quite possibly a move up here to this target level. All right, so that's a uh, couple new trade ideas, and let me go over the uh, charts I'm watching today that I covered this morning. Okay, there's really not a lot to update on the indexes because we're still above trend. We're above those trend lines posted on the futures. We have the wedges. Uh, again, that was this morning. These are this morning's charts. And we're most importantly above that 80-40 level on NQ, which is key support. It was tested yesterday as well as that 30-22 level on ES. So until then, the, you know, the trend is up without anything uh, even you know remotely close to sell signal there on the indexes. Uh, the only trading op that I saw today, and this is just a day trading op in the trading room, uh, earlier today, uh, we had uh, NQ came in to make a uh, near-perfect test of the top of today's gaps. You know, the gap is when you open up. Uh, you can see this yellow uh, dash line right here. That represents yesterday's close. So you gapped up today, and gaps are just just tremendous trading vehicles or they act as magnets you know when you get close enough you usually test uh, the top of the gap and or the bottom axis support what happens if you enter the gap now we had come down too much too fast today or too far I believe to just keep going and enter the gap so I, I went long there uh, posted that as a, um, uh, a long entry for a day trading op uh, and I uh, even had, you know, still had a short that I had taken into the day, mentioned yesterday. I'm not adding to that swing short yet. Well, no, I'm back into it. What am I saying? So I, I, I told, but I, I wanted to double up on that position, and I haven't done that yet. So basically what I did is I got underwater on the short. I just wrote it through. I'm not that concerned right now. It's probably not a good idea, but I had... Uh, uh, no stops on that position last night. It was a starter position anyways. And so I was able to exit it there, go long uh, for a bounce trade targeting this level right here. You can see uh, resistance on the QQQ. And again, I used NQ and then reverse there, which I've done. Uh, so that was uh, earlier today. That was at 1219 when we hit that uh, level there. And this was the uh, updated chart. So that at that point, uh, you know, it was good for, I think, a good quarter point uh, move in QQQ. And if you trade NQ, and in fact, I listed TQQQ, you'd want to leverage up. Remember, if you're going to do a day trade, a day trade is like swing trading and fast forward. Uh, you're going for very quick moves with relatively small gains. As such, you take several times. It can be anywhere from three to five, ten times or more what you take on a swing trade because you don't have overnight risk. You're going to close that trade out, especially if you're in QQQ futures. You can ride them into the close. Not today because we're going to shut down, you know, after uh, the close today and then we don't open up again until Friday night. So on the futures, you do have the risk of a gap against your position. Uh, and in QQQ, you have it every day and, and uh, two extra days of overnight risk on a weekend. So Anyways, that target was hit uh, good for a quarter point, which is a, a decent gain for a day trade. And we've gone a little higher. That was uh, 1.22 p.m. today. And again, this is just active trading stuff more so, you know, things I post in the trading room. And we're a little bit above it now. Um, I'm not overly concerned. You know, there's, there's plenty of reactions here. Um, but again, I'll, I'll make a decision as to whether uh, to close this out. Um, looking for another thrust down this afternoon, um, but uh, like I said, I'll probably just uh, go and flat over the weekend, uh, regardless of whether this one pans out or not. 
One other idea, I posted this in the uh, trading room, swing trading group, is ZB. Uh, ZB are the 30-year uh, treasury bonds. So you could also trade TLT as ETF. Uh, we broke out in the update today. I pointed out, you know, we hit that extreme oversold, uh, overbought reading about 84 on the RSI 9 uh, 60 minute chart. Plus, we were at resistance, uh, several knocks up against that 161, 216 resistance uh, slash target and pulled back. So, I posted that earlier today, um, you know, in there about 1230 as an objective long. Like I said, we overshot it. That's a that's what I call a momentum fueled overshoot. I think we'll get a room. We have gotten a reaction sense uh, around that level. Momentum fueled overshoot means you have a lot of velocity, you know, coming down into that, a lot of downside momentum. It'll usually carry you through a support level a little bit uh, even if you're going to bounce or have a reaction off there so that was then that was earlier today and if I can find it here somewhere down on these uh, charts at the bottom here mm, here it is all right so that's basically we're still there right now you can see I zoom in tight and that's so far a reaction I define a reaction as a, a bounce and or consolidation so far we've consolidated on that level intraday and it's holding you know PPO's wants to turn it's not turned up yet but if it can curl up here above that zero line that'll be a good thing and again just a, a shot you know some of you at least one person on the front page today had mentioned uh, booking some profits on uh, gold and treasury bonds uh, yesterday or recently and rightfully so you know they get very sold nothing goes straight up forever so as of now they still look good and like I said it's something I want to monitor going for because we had an up here a nice lift off that divergent low the breakout above the downtrend line uh, and as I like to say a few days doesn't quite make a trend however if if we do reverse here or anywhere soon and put in a, a lower high and then take out these previous highs, in other words, that 161, 216, we have the making of an uptrend. And again, that will then uh, further uh, be a, a, a red flag for the market. You know, the fact treasuries are pulling back today with stocks rallying is a wash. I mean, that's what treasuries normally would do when stocks go up. Had they continued higher, I'd say it's more of a red flag today and I'd become more bearish. So right now, you know, stocks are rallying today and treasuries are pulling back. And so we'll watch this, you know, day to day, what I'm trying to get at, one day uh, disconnect or, you know, a reconnect, I should say, in this case of the uh, correlation or inverse correlation between treasury bonds and stocks doesn't mean much. Let's watch this next week. If we get a reversal here, I think it's objective. You can go long there. You could, you know, add long there again if we get to uh, 159, 210, but really not much below that. Uh, you wouldn't want to add and you would probably want to stop out. So right now this is what I'm favoring and we'll see if that happens. We'll watch this into next week. Gold's not doing much today so I'll skip that. Um, we'll, we'll look at CL uh, this morning. So, you know, CL held that uh, 53.79. You know, I mentioned CL recently um, as a we had divergence building from this point. And as I said I had two trend lines here and I said a scaling zone would be, you know, down to that level, but, uh, you know, uh, not far below that 53.79 support. Stop somewhat below there. And so far it reversed. And again, this morning, everything I was seeing in the charts indicated we'd probably rally up to at least 53.79. Uh, I'm sorry, at least the 55.54 area like that. That was again this morning. And that's what we did. So, so far we're a little bit above there. And I posted an update on the comment thread below this post. And if I can find CL, we'll do an update now. And so what you have here is a momentum fueled overshoot so far. You know, don't want to just because you break 55, 54 and you go up a couple pennies when you have a lot of upside, you're going to carry through that level. That's almost uh, almost a, uh, I don't want to say a guarantee, but a, a highly likely. And so far, uh, like I said, we overshot a little and we're kind of consolidating around that level. Now, if it can power back up, print a couple solid one or two solid green candles above this level, that does open the door for a move up to this next target here, about 56.88. Personally, I, I had a limit order right there, just a hair below 55, 54. I just wanted out. I'm kind of lightening up into the weekend because of my, my near-term direction on crude. Just like natural gas, I told you I wasn't very confident. Uh, more so on crude. I made it clear I actually wanted that uh, up to at least that level on crude. Uh, natural gas. Here, I made my thoughts pretty clear this morning, and uh, I don't think it can be any more clear than that. I said, you know, 50-50 odds is what I was giving it, whether, uh, well, there it is, you can read it, whether we, whether the correction was over, I'm talking the correction from the reversal off the 270, uh, 
2.711 uh, resistance level breakdown of the bearish rising wedge negative divergence uh, we flagged overnight broke down and um, so as I said this morning it was coin toss odds for me so I like I said the best thing to do I know a lot of you shorted that and you know whether it's uh, D gas or natural uh, NG futures um, said just tighten up stops I know at least one person asked me in the trading room I think it was the trading room today uh, about you know what would be the buy catalyst for a move up to 2.711 that target again uh, they asked if it would be a break over 2.62 and I said no that one's not significant the 264 level is significant that's that's the big level uh, you can see more better much better defined right here with these reactions there and there and back here and back here so that was the big level so I said if 264 pops that could likely open the door up um, you know for a move up to uh, 2.711 and uh, let's look at that gas what happened since then boom there it is bingo so uh, hopefully they caught that uh, like I said I just lowered stops and got out of my shorts for nice profit and uh, you know in hindsight I would have took that but I'm kind of lightening up as we go into the weekend here and it, now we're at resistance again so if you're in it uh, I would say that's a great time if you you know if you took it anywhere today or to pop over 264 you can see it was a swift move up there um, that was probably I don't know three percent or so uh, rally just just from the breakout off that level yeah better better than three uh, percent gain uh, so congrats there but as of now we're back to resistance and we still have you know any any marginal new high over that recent high right there uh, is going to be a divergent high doesn't mean it can't burn through those divergences like I said earlier today the uh, uh, you know the correction may very well be over and with this impulsive move up uh, it's kind of looking that way but the thing about natural gas I love trading it because fewer securities out there there are f I, f I can't think of a commodity that can put you know so much money in your pocket in short order it can also take it away quickly if you're on the wrong side because natural gas is very volatile uh, but it trades well to the technicals when you have clear patterns you know you had the clear downtrend line here break down back test all this trend line here to work um, but when when it starts to become unclear that's why I like to step aside you over trade this one you're gonna get back profits when you got them so that's that's it right now I mean maybe I can tell you it's an objective short right now as I'm doing the video is it two you know two uh, it's stopped it had a momentum overshoot at that level again um, it may want to punch and make a new high maybe not but by objective it just means you know you take a shot keep in mind it's Friday so you're gonna have to take it into the weekend and just like anything else it can gap up that's so if it wasn't a Friday afternoon I'd probably maybe take a shot there at a short for a pullback trade just trail down stops you know raise lower them to entry if the trade starts to pan out and um, but however I don't want to gamble over the weekend I'll just wait and see how things look on Monday and the next one up was coffee uh, so coffee continues to stair step higher um, and it was coming up on that uh, 1.0295 uh, target 295 target you get that close you're usually gonna hit a target once you get close it's almost like a, a magnet it's a pretty pretty nice level um, and I you know said so the odds for a pullback are decent but let me be clear this isn't an uptrend coffee I'm bullish on coffee the charts are constructive not just a 60 minute the daily charts um, and so you know I'm more concerned about um, you know uh, going either taking profits when a pullback is likely or buying on a dip on a pullback when I see these adding to a position or buying back into it more so than shorting it you can certainly try to but uh, you're in an uptrend why fight the trend um, so it may very well burn through these divergences either way that target's been hit uh, with the next level up here here well, let me get to the updated chart well there it is actually the next uh, that next target there was hit see there there's a good reason see divergences it hasn't burned through them yet they continue to build and that gives us even you still a, a decent odds for a correction here so that's a target I've had for a, a while in fact the highest one on the 60 minute chart I'm gonna have to zoom out now uh, we have some highs back here but uh, so far we've had a nice run on this one it's been highlighted since back here I can't remember exactly where we had this divergent low and it's gained about what is this in just pretty short order about 13% uh, uh, or so uh, so you have the divergence they could be burned through soon and uh, I'll have to focus on or jump out to a daily chart I wasn't I didn't have one uh, queued up already for this video but again if you're in JO I've mentioned JO is the uh, proxy for you, uh, those of you that don't trade futures and this is what JO looks like uh, nothing but 
<laughs> bullish chart, nothing but I can't you know nitpick this chart in any way, shape, or form. You had nice divergent low, positive divergence there. Um, you broke out, and we've been moving up steadily. However, there's that 3470 target that comes in. See, Joe does a pretty good job of tracking uh, the coffee futures. Some ETNs don't do a good job. This one does a pretty decent job, and you can see there's those two reaction lows I just showed you on the 60-minute chart that m mesh with that target. So we're at resistance. I can just say this: the trend is up. Don't underestimate coffee. I've traded it for many years, and when it wants to run, it can keep running. These are just bear market rallies so far. Um, but I would say this is a good time if you were caught most or all of that run, maybe book profits or or just tighten stops. Be willing, you know, you, you can't put them too tight if you're trying to catch the bigger trend. Um, hard to say where, if and when it'll pull back, but I just want to say it is at resistance where the odds for a reaction, meaning a consolidation or a pullback, are elevated. And, um, and so you decide whether you want to book some profits, raise stops, put them tight if you want. You'll probably get stopped out if we do get a pullback, but you can always get back in or just let it run. You know, again, it all depends on your entry where you got in on this one. But uh, if it powers through there, if it can pop 3470 with conviction, my next target here is about 36. There's a big old gap right there in resistance, just a hair above 36. And then, like I said before on this trade, for those of you in it, I'm using the same price targets I had on the last trade. This was the last time we went did official trade on JO. First target, second tar target, third target. And that's when we reversed. And at that time, I said I expected a reversal. I just didn't expect it to go down that far or I would have canceled out that target. But however, that target remains valid now. And uh, so these are your targets on the way up. Although, as I just said, uh, forget about T2. I'm kind of contradicting what I just said. This That target was set at 36.37. Uh, I would be, uh, if you're looking to close out there, if it gets there, a little shy of 36.09. So right around the 36 level because, again, we have the gap. And since that target was hit, we set up some reactions there on that line there about 36.09. Okay, and that's it. You know, that's uh, not everything I'm watching, but a lot of the things. There's NQ still wedging higher, still clearly has divergence. Uh, again, divergence is not a sell signal, merely an indication. Trend change is likely, but you need to get a breakdown. At this point, we're a little higher up that uh, within the wedge, so you would get an earlier sell signal here. And then, of course, a higher probability sell signal if and when that 80-40 level goes. And similar story with ES. It's in the wedge. You need to break uh, the wedge, lower trend line. This wedge isn't as well-defined, really. We had a little break below, so focus more on that 30-22 level. And you can see the divergence is still there intact. Uh, oh, I should update the uh, BYND. Beyond Meat, I posted in the trading room. Um, just trying to get this trend line. There it is. Uh, BYND, that uh, the stop was clipped on that today. I shared my thoughts in the trading room uh, at the time that, uh, you know, Technically, it stopped out. I used a very tight stop on this one, or you know, relatively tight stop. Normally, you might set a stop below that, the reaction low from the other day, and you still could. I said that you can still. Uh, this one may need to pound out a bottom here, and so it still looks okay. But uh, as far as the official trade, I'll get around to updating. There's quite a few I need to move out of the that are still listed as active trades. Uh, but this one did tick slightly below that 82.59. Again, a relatively tight stop. If you're still in it, uh, depends you know where you're targeting. Um, you know you you want to probably uh, keep a stop uh, not too far below that recent low right there. And again, it still has potential, but you're going to have to uh, get above that recent high. If you do, you'll probably backfill the gap there, uh, hit this trend line, and then you know any of these potential targets. That's still the minimum target. Uh, so official, unofficial, it's up to you. Everything that I, you know, post, whether they're price targets, stops, even the trade ideas themselves are just suggestions, things that I see, and then I try to give levels that, um, you know, mesh, you know, the targets uh, align with the, uh, the stops align with the uh, profit potential on the targets. And MJ and the pot socks, they continue to, you know, they look okay. They're, like I said, I want to see more umph. I need to see them take out the recent highs, so... Not my favorite at this point. They're still active trades. Nothing uh, has changed in the ch uh, charts enough 
to convince me to close them out early. You know, it hasn't hit the stop here on MJ. Um, but I wouldn't add to this one or take it if you're, you know, if you didn't do it already, because so far this is not the follow-up action I like to see on a breakout. I was looking for a short squeeze, and that's not really what I'm seeing so far. There was a, there was a little lift, you know, off the trend line break. Don't get me wrong, um, but so far kind of lackluster follow-through. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, again that the, there's no chance the trade pans out, and all of a sudden that starts to happen. You know, we're still well above the recent lows, but we need to get up there and have another leg up soon. And if so, then that's MJ should look something like that. All right, let's wrap it up here. Uh, that covers most of what I'm watching right now. And uh, like I said, today, probably a non-event. We'll, we'll have to see what happens next week. And, uh, you know, I'm around. I might wrap up early today, knock off a few errands. Otherwise, I'll do a, a closing market wrap, which probably won't cover much more than I already did. I will only cover the broad markets and that. So um, if I don't get around to that, have a great weekend, everybody. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.